Kylian Mbappe, arguably one of the world's greatest footballers right now, and with everybody seemingly trying to second guess where he will be playing his football next season, I'm going to take a look at which clubs I realistically think have a chance of signing the player. Since he made his professional debut for Monaco back in 2015 when he was just 16 years of age, Mbappe has been one of the most talked about young talents across Europe, especially after he won that Golden Boy Award. And then, of course, he made the move to PSG three years ago for 180 million euros. He became the second most expensive player, his teammate Neymar, of course, being first, and the most expensive teenager. And I think since then, the footballing world has known that the club has had a real star on their hands. And you fast forward to present day, he already has four league and titles and a World Cup under his belt and he seems set to take the baton from the likes of Lionel Messi and Cristiano Ronaldo as one of the world's greatest footballers. And after his performance in early 2021 against Barcelona which saw him score a phenomenal hat-trick in the Champions League, it served as a brilliant reminder about why he is such an impressive player. What brought Mbappe to the limelight was of course his speed and direct attacking style and although his top speed has been recorded at over 20 miles per hour, he is more than just that. When you watch Mbappe's ball control, his shooting and ability to always find the right position, whether playing on the right or left and cutting inside or through the middle, you can see that he has excellent instinct for a 22-year-old. And of course, he's almost impossible to defend. You see defenders that try and stick close to him, he knocks the ball past them, he evades them and the space takes over. Or you look at defenders that maybe try to drop deep and what does Mbappe do? He normally just scores from 25 yards and I think that is what fans love so much about him. It's the sight of him breaking through, being chased by defenders but managing to pull away as if he's winning a 100 metre race and with one touch he scored a goal and it's game over for the opposition. His method is simple and direct but it takes real talent and is 100% effective. Of course, his contract does expire with PSG in 20. 22 and what this means is that the club do not want to see him go for a free next season so they are looking to try and push him to sign a new deal but if he doesn't decide to renew they are willing to listen to offers from other clubs and the price tag according to reports in France 200 million euros the thing with Mbappe is that he is not rushing he wants to take his time and assess what options he does have so let's take a look at some of those options First up, and it's Real Madrid. Now, I know I did mention Erling Haaland and Real Madrid in a previous video, which you can check out above my head. But for now, let's just focus on Mbappe and put Haaland on the back burner. I mean, I think it's no secret that Kylian Mbappe has been dreaming of Real Madrid. And I think Los Blancos have been dreaming of him as well. You know, there are reports that when Mbappe was young, he had pictures of Cristiano Ronaldo and Real Madrid plastered all over his bedroom walls. And you can kind of understand that this would maybe be the next natural step to make the move to Real Madrid. Kind of similar to Ronaldo in that it was always his dream to play for Real Madrid, he had a plan and he stuck to it. So Mbappe may end up doing the same thing. Real Madrid not only need goals, but they need pretty much a refresh when it comes to their players up front. Of course, Kylian Mbappe can play in a centre forward role, he can play on the right wing, but I personally feel that he's best suited to his role on the left wing. So let's take a look at who Real Madrid already have. First up, Eden Hazard. You know, he is a brilliant player when he's on form, but he's been injured so many times, he's so inconsistent, and it's not really looking good for the player. Then you've got Vinicius Jr, a great young talent for Real Madrid on that left wing, not on the same level as Mbappe but still a promising player. And then you've got the likes of Marco Asensio and Rodrigo that have also covered that area of the left wing but they are also very good on the right as well. This means that Mbappe would slot in nicely at Real Madrid as an unselfish winger who could quickly start attacks with his agility and his movement would open up opportunities for other players. I think that Hazard, Benzema and Mbappe would create a really fluid front three. You know, you'd have Hazard breaking down defences, you'd have Benzema facilitating play and then of course you would have Mbappe with his finishing. But of course, Hazard and Mbappe do both play on that left wing. So I think what would have to happen is that they would have to find another area of the pitch for Hazard to play or they would have to rotate the two players. And at the moment, no disrespect to Hazard, but he's not able to play a full season because he is injured so much. So maybe they actually could rotate the two players. We'll have to wait and see if it happens. Now, I'm sure people will be saying, what about the financial situation with Real Madrid? And although it would be difficult to get Mbappe, I don't think it's impossible. Quite a few stars would have to align for the move to happen. And I think one of the main things that they'd have to look at is competing with PSG for his salary. Madrid could offer up to 21 million euros net per season. That is what the player allegedly earns.
returns at PSG currently, but within their contract extension negotiations, the French club would up his salary to the same as Neymar at 36 million euros per season. Now, this will be really, really tough for Real Madrid to compete with, but what they're hoping to do is compromise with image rights. Now, normally the club do give the player a percentage of the image rights, and what they're hoping to do is up this percentage for Mbappe as this compromise. And also Real Madrid are hoping to offload quite a few players and generate around 100 to 120 million euros from summer sales. So this means that the likes of Isco, Sergio Ramos, Marcelo, maybe Mariano as well, perhaps Luka Jovic, this could actually free up a little bit of money for the club. And of course there is Gareth Bale. He has seemingly found his form with Spurs now and with every good performance the Real Madrid executives will surely be rubbing their hands together as this means that they are one step closer to offloading his 30 million euro salary off the wage bill. Their aim is for Bale to perform at Spurs and have a solid campaign in the Euros, increase their market interest, offload the player, remove his substantial salary and of course lure Mbappe. If these things can be met, then I think a deal could actually be reached. At the end of the day, this is not just about making a move to Real Madrid because it's a big club and he could win the Champions League and he'd sell a load of shirts. It's about his dream and what he really wants as a footballer. It's about being part of a legacy and part of a history. You know, Real Madrid are synonymous with massive, massive names moving to the club, gracing them with their presence on the pitch. And Mbappe wants to be part of this. And if that is his dream, then I don't see why a deal could not be reached. And the next club is Liverpool. Now I know quite a few clubs in the Premier League have been linked with Mbappe but seemingly Liverpool are the front runners. Now they did try and sign the player back when he was at Monaco twice actually and ever since the club have reportedly been in touch with his representatives. Of course it has been a rocky season for Liverpool and they haven't quite managed to defend their Premier League title like we expected them to but they still have some phenomenal players. Let's take a look at who they've got. You've got Sadio Mane, one of Liverpool's brightest stars. He's been fantastic for the club but he has been linked with a move away to Barcelona and Real Madrid. Then you've got Diogo Jota. He was a great signing for Liverpool. He has been injured since December, but he's shown moments of greatness on the pitch. Of course, if you're looking on the right, there is Mo Salah. He's already legend status at Liverpool, let's be honest. But the right wing isn't really preferred by Mbappe anyway, so I don't think this area of the pitch needs to be talked about too much. And then you've got Roberto Firmino. He links up so well with Mane and Salah as one of the most exciting front threes in the Premier League, but he has struggled with goals this season and currently only has six from 36 appearances. Now, of course, it would be difficult to accommodate all of these players in the team, and it would mean that Jurgen Klopp would have to shake things up a bit. But after a season like the one that they're having at the moment, maybe a shake-up's what they need. I mean, you look at Hutta, who I mentioned before. He has been great. Yes, he has played on that left wing, but he's also played as a centre-forward as well. And he's actually scored four goals whilst playing in this position already. So that's proof that he can move around the pitch. So it may just come down to Mane and Mbappe, and it may just have to be that these two players do rotate in this position. And of course, if Mane does does end up making a move, this means that Mbappe realistically would be the long-term replacement in that area. And then regarding up front, as brilliant as Roberto Firmino is as a player, I do think that Mbappe would slot in really well, as he would provide Liverpool with that extra little bit of productivity that I think they have been lacking, and he also could be healthy competition for the Brazilian. And of course, like I said, I did mention the right wing, which Mo Salah does tend to be on, but Mbappe could also play there if needed. And when you're looking at the money side of Mbappe to Liverpool, it could actually be doable according to recent news. So of course, Liverpool Football Club are owned by Fenway Sports Group, and reportedly they are getting ready to sell 10% of their business to a private equity firm. They've made it no secret that they are reportedly looking for some outside investors into the business. And if this does happen, it looks like the group could be getting 600 million euros. Of course, this isn't all going to Liverpool Football Club, of course, but it does give the club hope regarding signing Mbappe. Now, out of all the options, I can totally understand why people are a little bit sceptical about Liverpool. At the end of the day, they haven't had the greatest season. And of course, they do already seem to have players in these areas of the pitch. And it would mean that Klopp would have to make quite a few tactical and stylistic changes but at the end of the day it's still being talked about it's still a transfer that is on everybody's mind and of course you pair this with the fact that Jurgen Klopp is a massive fan of Mbappe and Mbappe has also reportedly said that he wouldn't mind working with the player and on top of this you then would give Mbappe the opportunity for some new challenges he'd be competing for the English Premier League he would still be playing with a team of players that are absolutely brilliant you cannot take that away from them so I think that this transfer could still happen 
And the final option, of course, which seems to be getting more and more feasible, dare I say it, is that he will stay at PSG. Now, of course, the club are putting pressure on the player. They do not want this transfer saga extending into the summer. And with a player like Mbappe, you cannot really blame them for putting pressure on him. It does kind of make sense for him to stay at PSG. You know, he's a Parisian man playing for a Parisian club. It makes sense. It's almost like a footballing fairy tale, apart from that Champions League trophy that they are, of course, still lacking. But at the end of the day, if he does stay at PSG, he knows the club. He knows what to expect from them. He knows what is expected of him. He gets to potentially be a part of the club's history if he does stay with the club and they then go on to win that Champions League trophy. Of course, he would also get to stay with Neymar. Of course, we have seen both these players interchange on the left wing. It's clearly working thus far, so I'm sure this would continue. And in addition, both can play in other areas of the pitch as well. Also, Neymar is 29 years of age and to be honest, at the moment, it doesn't seem like he can get through a season without a big injury. So in the long run, he would actually end up replacing Neymar. And of course, there is talk of Lionel Messi joining PSG. And I can't imagine that Mbappe would want to give up the opportunity of playing alongside Neymar and Messi and being part of arguably one of the world's greatest football teams. But of course, like we've heard so many times in this transfer saga, Mbappe wants to take his time and make the right decision for him, which I completely and utterly understand. Personally, I think he's going to stay at PSG a little bit longer, but I think in the long run, we will see him at Real Madrid. I think because of their financial situation at the moment, I think that he's going to maybe buy his time and wait a little bit longer. I think he does definitely want to move to Real Madrid, but I don't think now is exactly the right time for him. So I guess we'll have to wait and see. But like I say, me personally, I think he'll be at PSG a little bit longer, but do not be surprised if you see him wearing a white shirt in the future. So those are my thoughts on Kylian Mbappe and his next move. But what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments section below as well check out all the other videos that we have got here at OneFootball and until next time I will see you all later.